Thank you all for being here uh, and for coming to this update on the extreme weather headed our way for this holiday weekend. And uh, here's a briefing to help get us prepared. Today I'm joined by an incredible group of public service, public servants uh, working across Metro who are working to prepare Metro's emergency weather response. We have Chief Swan of our fire department and our emergency preparedness, Chief Drake, our Chief of Police, Scott Potter, Director of Metro Water Services. I'm sure water is going to be much on the mind of everybody the next few days. Diana Alicorn of our Department of Transportation, Philip Jones of our Department of Transportation, Renee Pratt, the Executive Director of Social Services, and April Calvin, our Director of Metro Homeless Impact Division. And as you can see, our metro agencies are on alert, and we are working together to address this challenge of extra cold weather in the next few days. After all, our first priority is the health and safety of all Nashvillians. Now, the National Weather Service has been advising that wind chills will be well below zero degrees from Friday morning until Sunday morning, and those are dangerous temperatures. Frostbite can occur within 30 minutes of skin being exposed. So please take the experts seriously and listen to the Metro officials here today. Take their advice and note of what you can do to keep yourselves, your loved ones, and your pets healthy this holiday weekend. And know that the, this Metro is always committed to working to keep you safe. And with that, I want to turn this over to Chief Swan and then again to encourage your viewers to take the weather very seriously and to be prepared for the next coming few days. Thank you. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it seemed like we were, had similar notes. But as you guys know, we're here because of the weather forecast, uh, dangerous temperatures. And we work closely with the National Weather Service, and they have issued a wind chill uh, warning for Metro Davidson County that takes effect uh, Friday midnight up into Friday noon. The wind chill factors could get as low as 17 below zero. So again, the sub uh, freezing temperatures always have us on alert. Uh, we want to make sure that you understand that, that the temperature will be below freezing from Thursday afternoon all the way to Monday afternoon. So you should make sure uh, that you adjust your plans to avoid being outdoors in the coldest part of the day. Also, make sure that your car has at least a half tank of gas and update your survival kit. From the OEM standpoint, Office of Emergency Management, our ESUs will be out uh, and making sure they're doing what we call cold patrols. They'll be providing blankets, gloves, warming devices, and any other items that are needed to individuals who wants them. We'll be working closely with Metro Social Services in their Homeless Impact Division to make sure that anyone that wants to get out of the code has a place to escape the weather. We are in close ties with NES. We, uh, we was going to have them here today, but for, uh, for some reason, uh, that the staffing, they were not able to come, but just to let you know, they, they're on watch as well. They, they're not expecting any power out outages, but they have beefed up their staff and they're prepared if that happens. So, so some safety notes that we like to always talk about as far as the Office of Emergency um, Management so that you guys will be more prepared and more safe here are some tips that we'd like to talk about. Making sure, number one, that you check on your neighbors, check on your pets, making sure if you lose power and you do have to use a generator, please help us prevent carbon monoxide poisoning by the generator needs to be outdoors in a well-ventilated place. We emphasize the importance of smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors, and make sure that you're checking your batteries that they are up and running. Gather all the supplies that you need, and remember to keep each, each, um, each person's specific needs in mind. That includes medication. And then also rem remember to have extra batteries for your radios and flashlights. These are some of the things that we see in the emergency field 
where incidents take places because people are not prepared. So again, tidbits in, uh, that we're given today, uh, if you pay close attention to your local news media uh, outlets and also to our social media outlets, we'll be given several different uh, tips. But as far as our departments, the public safety standpoint, uh, the fire department and OEM and all of our public safety uh, partners and first responders, police department and NDOT and water department, Look, we are very much aware that when emergencies don't stop just because we have a weather event. So we will be there and be ready, available when needed. If you need, need us and call 911, we'll be there. But we are uh, very concerned about our own personnel and we'll take every measures that we can to prevent from keeping them in exposed uh, temperatures uh, and we'll do all the necessary steps that we need to to help prevent that. But one big thing that you can all do to help us uh, in our personnel to stay safe is for you to stay safe. So remember, while you're home, and again, this is going to be a long duration of cold weather, please make sure that we're not using our stoves as heating devices or ovens. Keep anything that is, uh, that's, um, that's flame tart or anything that can catch on fire away from any type of heating device within three feet. Keep a three feet radius. If you have a heating uh, device in your home, make sure you turn it off when you go to bed. And then limit your travel time as much as possible. We have a lot of great departments here with us today from the water department and NDOT and, of course, uh, the police department. Uh, I do not want to step on their, their toes, but in the safety standpoint of Office of Emergency Management, just remember that, again, uh, NDOT will be working closely with keeping the roads, I know, as clear as possible. It's not so much the snow that we're concerned about, it's just the cold weather, flash freezing, um, transparency of uh, black ice, uh, bridges and overpasses, and then for the water. Uh, I know Scott Potter will probably talk a little bit about pipes bursting, but to make sure you keep a drip, uh, leave your pipe dripping or running. Again, you can help us, though, be safe by, by you staying safe. Again, we'll be there, we'll be on mon monitoring, we'll be watching, so thank you. So next up is uh, Chief Drake for the Police Department. Thank you, Mayor Cooper, and thank you, Chief Swan, and thank you all for being here uh, for this important press conference. Uh, we're all one team. You see all of these different departments here, but uh, although we have individual responsibilities, we come together for one purpose, and that's to keep Nashville safe. And with the extreme weather coming in, uh, that's just what this is. Uh, with the police department, we established uh, quality of life teams at each of the eight precincts. Those quality of life teams are designed to establish rapport with residents uh, that are in encampments and et cetera. While building that rapport, we can help transition people uh, to housing, et cetera, and to shelter. That's been very successful. Our quality of life teams will be out making more uh, frequent trips uh, to these places to try to ensure the safety of those encampments. Also, our officers will be making more frequent patrols as well. They know where these encampments are and will be uh, encouraging uh, those in those encampments to get to uh, a place of safety, a place that's also warm. Uh, as you've seen in prior years, we also have access to UTVs. Those UTVs allow us to go into remote areas, wooded areas, and check on those that are uh, less fortunate, and we've been able to actually bring people to safety, and we'll have those in effect during this cold weather as well. We'll also have a presence at the Brick Church Shelter from the time it opens to the time it closes to ensure the safety of everyone that's there. Also, I want to remind all Nashvillians that we all play a role in the safety of Nashville. And one of the greatest things, being a native here and growing up all my life, the thing about Nashville is when things happen, we rise to the occasion and we help those that are in need. We know this cold weather is coming through, and if you know someone that's elderly or vulnerable, please check on that person. If you see someone out, please call 615-862-8600, and we'll have someone to respond and check on that person as well. When you think of crime, let's think of you, you have to go to work or wherever you're going on your commute, and you have to warm your cars up, you know, it's going to have ice on the windshields, et cetera, please go out a little bit earlier, 
sit in your vehicle while it's warming up. Don't leave it unattended. That's how cars are stolen. And don't want you to come out in your yard and, and not have a car. Uh, again, 615-862-8600, and we'll be there to assist you in any way. Uh, next up to speak is uh, Scott Potter from the Water Department. Thank you, Chief. Um, from Metro Water Services' perspective, there's four things that we need to be prepared for. We have to have adequate staffing, proper equipment, um, proper fuel, and supplies. On the, on the staffing perspective, we'll have um, emergency response personnel available all four days over the holiday period to respond um, as necessary to any kind of emergency. One thing to note is in our plant facilities, our operators have to remain on site until they're properly relieved by a qualified person. So let's say we have an ICE event or something like that. If you're at a plant and you're an operator, you're required to stay on site. And for their safety, um, we do have places for them to sleep and food for them to eat in case they have to stay. But we'll always have proper staffing at our, at our plants. From a fuel perspective, all of our equipment is fueled up. And I've mentioned before that we have the ability to go off the grid at both of our water plants with our emergency diesels. So we're properly fueled on that as well. And we also have um, a really good warehouse that we're properly um, stocked. We prepare for that back in September to have all the equipment we need to uh, make the repairs. I do want to talk a little bit about your, your home pipes. Um, it's been mentioned already, but I'll just kind of tell you what I do at my home. At my house, I have my most remote faucet from my water shutoff valve, I open the, the cold water side of the, of the faucet and I get a little bitty stream of water out of that faucet. And that keeps the water moving pretty much throughout the entire house. And I also have um, next to my kitchen sink, my, my kitchen faucet, I leave that one with a small stream as well. And I do that because in my kitchen, I have an older home, there's not really good insulation between the kitchen sink and the outside world. So. It's kind of a, a double protection, but just to kind of give you an idea, if, if I run my, my water and I spend, you know, I have 50 gallons of water, that's gonna cost me 70 cents. So I think that 70 cent investment is worth it to, pre to prevent the risk of my pipes from, um, from freezing. We're gonna be ready to, to respond and uh, we'll make sure that you have drinking water that's available and proper sewage collection and treatment. So our next uh, speaker is our Director of uh, Transportation. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and happy holidays. Um, I'd like to provide you with some updates um, on the Nashville Department of Transportation ongoing response to the potential winter weather. Earlier today, NDOT crews began pre-treating primary roadway accesses in, in Nashville. The primary routes included our major artery roadways that connected residents and emergency response to essential services. And these roads are always our top priority during the winter weather. We anticipating having all of the primary routes pre-treated with brine by the end of today. Brine before the winter weather event brings the road surface uh, freezing temperature down from 32 to about 15 degrees and provides an important foundation in the event of precipitation. In the most, if most of the precipitation comes in as rain, unfortunately, the uh, brine will largely be uh, um, washed away. But if the precipitation Participate. Sorry, but if it, if the rain or the precipitation comes in as a freezing rain, sleet, or snow, the brine will be helpful to keep the roadways warm. Tomorrow, alongside Metro's Office of Emergency Management, NDOT will be closely monitoring the weather um, forecasts and conditions. We will be updating the public on our plan moving forward. But the trucks are currently loaded, and the crews are on standby to respond quickly as needed. We will, of course, be working closely with our great partners over at TDOT, who will be treating interstates across Nashville and Middle Tennessee. In terms of staff capacity and materials, uh, we're in very good shape. We have over 40,000 gallons, gallons of brime on hand, 20,000 gallons of calcium um, chloride on hand, 9,000 tons of salt, 32 salt trucks and snow plows ready to go. 28 primary um, snow route remo removal, snow removal routes, and 28 secondary snow uh, removal routes. In the event Nashville receives the frozen precipitation, we ask residents to please stay home um, until the road conditions are improved. With Friday's temperature being extremely cold, uh, what falls and sticks won't be melting quickly. 
Um, NDOT's priority will be treating the primary and secondary routes, and side roads will not be cleared until primary and secondary um, are treated. And if any residents and Nashvilleans have any concerns, we ask that you please report it in through Hub Nashville to us. Um, I have every confidence in the great people working at NDOT uh, to respond to winter weather and make roads um, passable, and especially want to thank our Assistant Director of Operations, Philip um, Jones, um, who's led our NDOT winter weather responses for many years. So we're, he's, we're quite prepared. I also want to uh, say thank you to our Metro Fleet Services for supporting us in this. Um, we would not be as successful if it were not for them being at our partner with us. I'm also grateful uh, to Mayor Cooper and Chief Swan for their wonderful leadership during these events, um, and thank you. And with that, I will now turn it over to, um, sorry, I apologize, Phyllis, thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Chief Swan, and thank you, Chief Drake. We really appreciate all the Metro departments that are working diligently with us to ensure that we can help our homeless neighbors this long stretch of cold weather to ensure that they will be healthy and, and safe and that we can keep them warm. Our plan is to provide cold weather sheltering for the homeless beginning tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. We will provide rides based with WeGo and also van service. And our Homeless Impact Division will be at the WeGo Depot directing people to our shelter and to which bus and van to get on to go to the Brick Church Shelter. The plan is to keep the shelter open 24 hours a day, beginning tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock until Monday. This is to ensure that our homeless neighbors get in safely and hopefully get in early before the weather sets in and becomes inclement and we can't get people in like we need to. Our hope is that we get in our low barrier shelter, everyone that needs to come in from the cold. The purpose of our low barrier shelter is to ensure that couples, people with pets, and people that have been barred from other shelters have a place to come to our shelter to remain safe and warm. I will turn it over to April Calvin, who will give you more specific information on the shelter. Thank you. Thank you to all of the wonderful leaders that are here today. I would also like to thank our wonderful nonprofits here in Nashville. A lot of this work is made um, possible by their assistance and their help. Um, special provisions that will be made would re um, include Room in the Inn. They're operating under their normal operations, except for on Sunday, they will also include a Sunday brunch that will include um, a meal from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., along with um, restroom facility operations and other cold weather goods being provided at that point in time. Also, the Nashville Rescue Mission, they are on record of um, lowering all of their barriers beginning November 1st, and they also allow for day sheltering, so that will help with Metro being um, truly an overflow shelter. Metro Social Services typically operate the overflow shelter, and that's what we would like for it to be utilized as. First option should be Nashville Rescue Mission and Room in the Inn. Transportation is provided by WeGo Central, um, and WeGo has been instrumental in providing cold weather connection cards, the 23B bus that will allow them straight, um, di uh, straight drive to the cold weather shelter on Brick Church Pike. Also, we have a contract vendor that we utilize to help with assisting um, outside Antioch, Hermitage, Madison area so that they'll have easy access to the shelter as well. Our nonprofits help with cold patrol after hours, and hopefully we'll be providing that some during the day um, as we experience these dangerously low temperatures. The holiday season and dangerously low temperatures um, can cause some capacity concerns. So if you go to Hands On Nashville, there is an option for you to volunteer to assist with We Go Central and helping to greet our participants so that they can move on to the shelter as swiftly as possible. I'd like to thank you all for coming out today. As you ask questions, we'll just bring up the, the parties that we think that would be better suited to answer it. So. 
general question, but what coordination, just considering how many people are planning to travel in the next 24, 48 hours, what communications have there been with uh, partners like DNA about um, how that's going to flow into the service? Well, I will say that uh, we're very proud of the, how we do things in our infrastructure within Nashville. Uh, we, we, we put on so many different events in Nashville that the team that you see here, and we're missing so many others, it makes us effective how we um, transition through any type of operational uh, state. Uh, but I have not reached out uh, to BNA uh, on this subject matter, but uh, I'll be more than happy to direct you to the right person that can answer that question. All right. Any questions? All right, good. Thank you, guys. Let's be safe. Thank you.